All right, in this video, I'm going to do another example of what might be considered a slightly harder integration problem. And again, just going to run through kind of my thought process on, on how to get started on a problem like this. So here we're going to integrate x times ln of x divided by the square root of x squared minus 1 dx. Okay, so again, uh, the first thing I think of is, do I just know it? Well, in this case, you know, I, I don't know an antiderivative for that off the bat. So the next thing I would think is, is there any sort of u substitution that would work? And in this case, well, you know, if we let u equal ln of x, well, du would be 1 over x dx. I don't see how that gets me uh, anywhere at all. I think if we let u equal x squared minus 1, du would be 2x dx, and that would help us get rid of some of it, but then that still doesn't account for the ln of x, so that doesn't really help me either. So I don't think a u substitution. The only thing that's really even left to me is to do integration by parts. And that's the only thing that seems reasonable. I don't see any algebra that I can do to simplify this. Nothing that, that you know, that nothing sticks out to me that would make sense at least. It's definitely not a trig substitution. Now, a lot of times, it almost does look like a trig substitution problem, but again, the fact that this ln of x uh, is present, that makes me think it's not going to be a trig substitution. It's definitely not a trig integral, right? I mean, there's no trig in there, so it's not a trig integral. And the last thing is partial fractions. Well, again, I don't see this being a partial fractions problem. Um, so the only thing that's left to me is to do integration by parts. Okay, so remember the integration by parts formula, u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. So there's our good old integration by parts formula. So we've got to pick something to be u. We've got to pick something to be dv. Well, I think I would certainly pick u to be the term ln of x. du is going to be 1 over x dx. Well, I guess the rest of it, dv, would have to be x over the square root of x squared minus 1. And the reason why I pick these again, you know, I pick u to be ln of x because the derivative of that, well, it's easy to take the derivative. It's a little bit more of a, a, a process to find the antiderivative of ln of x. Again, it's not terrible. You just use integration by parts, actually. But I'm recognizing, hey, if I let u be ln, the derivative is this to me, it seems somehow nicer, 1 over x dx. And I also notice that if I let dv be x divided by the square root of x squared minus 1, I recognize that I can find the antiderivative of that uh, relatively easily. So off to the side, we'll have to find the antiderivative of x divided by the square root of x squared minus 1. Now, you could do this using a trig substitution, but that would certainly be overkill. I'm going to do a, a substitution, a u substitution. Since I've already got u and v's, dv's, whatever, labeled, instead of the letter u, I'm just going to use w. So I'm going to let w equal x squared minus 1. Well, dw will be 2x dx. And now in this case, we can simply multiply both sides by 1 half or divide by 2. So 1 half w will be x dx. So if we find our antiderivative here, I'm going to pull the 1 half out front. The x dx, again, that's we've got our 1 half. We'll have dw. And the denominator will we'll simply have the square root of w or w to the 1 half power. Well, we can rewrite that as w to the negative 1 half. So there's our 1 half out front. And then we just add 1 to our exponent, right? We'll get uh, w to the positive 1 half. And we're dividing that by 1 half plus c. Well, 1 half divided by 1 half is going to give us 1. So we'll have the square root of w. Again, the square root of w, we said w is x squared minus 1. So there's going to be our antiderivative. So we've now figured out v. v is going to be x squared minus 1. Okay, so that's the fun thing with integration by parts. You know, picking your dv, actually to get back to 
to V, you know, to in integrating can sometimes be a problem unto itself. But all right, so let's use our integration by parts formula and see what happens. So we've got U times V, so U is ln of X times V, which is the square root of X squared minus one, minus the integral of V times DU. So in this case, we'll have the square root of X squared minus one over X DX. Okay, so now I think, huh, you know, I've got to now integrate this, uh, this square root of x squared minus 1 over x, and I'm thinking, what would be the way to do this? Well, okay, I guess we could certainly do, um, let's see, in this case a u sub is not going to work, right? If we let u equal x squared minus 1, du is going to be 2x dx. We don't have x dx in this problem. I mean, what we have is we have 1 over x dx. So this isn't going to help us at all. I don't see any clear algebra I can do to simplify this integral down. So OK, so let's think. A u sub, I don't see how that works, um, um, at least not uh, letting u equal x squared minus 1. What I think now is, I think this is probably going to be, or at least I can do it, using a trigonometric substitution. And again, a lot of times we use trig substitutions when we have quadratics floating around. So in this case, we've got this x squared minus 1. Again, I would have thought about using a trig substitution at the beginning, except for that, that, that ln of x is in there. Okay, so I'm going to do a trig substitution here, and hopefully everything will work out without too much without too much trouble. So let's see. We've got x equals a sine theta, a secant theta, a tangent theta. Which one is this? Um, I always, I really don't have them memorized off the top of my head. Um, I have to think about the trig identity. But I think if we let x equal secant theta, I think we should be, be in luck here. So if we calculate dx, the derivative of secant theta is secant theta tangent theta um, d theta. Let me put that on there. So let me just work on this integral now, sort of off to the side. We won't forget about our ln of x, square root of x squared minus 1. We'll come back to that. OK, so I'm really just trying to integrate the square root of x squared minus 1 over x dx. And again, this is the substitution that I'm going to use. So let's see. If we replace x with secant theta, we'll have secant squared theta minus 1. Again, x in the denominator is secant theta. Uh, let's see, we've got to replace our dx, which is also, we've got secant theta, tangent theta, d theta. So let's see, we can immediately cancel out a secant theta and a secant theta. Recall that the identity for secant squared theta minus 1, recall that that's just tangent squared theta when we use our trig identity there. We still have this other tangent of theta uh, still left over, d theta. So let's see now. Um, so the square root of tangent, so the square root of tangent squared theta, we're just going to get a tangent theta here when we get rid of the square root. Well, we still have our other tangent. So really, we're integrating tangent squared theta, d theta. So now I'm thinking, OK, I now my, my new issue is to now integrate tangent squared theta. Well, again, you know, sometimes in these problems I get lost and I think, do I know a trig function whose derivative is tangent squared? Well, I don't think I do off the top of my head. So now the question is, how do I integrate tangent squared? You know, is it, I could write it as sine squared over cosine squared. Um, I don't think that's going to help me. Uh, actually, there's kind of a nice easy way to integrate tangent squared theta. And to integrate tangent squared theta, we're actually just going to use that, that trig identity, that tangent squared theta is secant squared theta minus 1. Because now I know an antiderivative of secant squared theta. That's just tangent of theta, right? The derivative of tangent is secant squared. And the antiderivative of negative 1 will be negative theta. Of course, we would get plus c, but I'm not going to write this down because we're just calculating this in, in, indefinite integral. I'll eventually put it all together and put a plus c in there. So I'm going to be technically a little sloppy. It's not the end of the world. 
Okay, so so now we're pretty much we're basically there, right? I, at this point, I think well, the nightmare's over. Um, I know how to integrate the second function. We get tangent theta minus theta. Now I just need to put it back in terms of x, and we'll be in business. So we've got that x over one equals secant theta. That's just from our initial substitution. Okay, so let's see. We've got sine. That's so Sokotoa. That's how I always remembered it. So let's see. So cosine of the angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. That means secant of theta is going to be the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So the hypotenuse has length x. The adjacent has length 1. If we do Pythagorean theorem, so x squared is going to equal the missing side squared plus 1 squared. So x squared minus 1, if we square root that, that will give us our missing side. Let's see. So likewise, if x equals secant theta, um, notice we've got theta floating around. So in this case, we'll have to take arc secant of both sides. So arc secant of x is going to be theta. The other thing we have to figure out a value for is tangent of theta. Well, again, tangent is the opposite over the adjacent side. So tangent of theta is just the same thing as the square root of x squared minus 1. And now we've got our solution. Okay, We can write everything down. So we said we get ln of x times the square root of x squared minus 1 minus the antiderivative of the square root of x squared minus 1 over x. That's what we just calculated. We said it's tangent theta minus theta plus c. And now I'm just going to substitute in what we found here. So I've got ln of x times the square root of x squared minus 1 minus tangent of theta, which we said is the square root of x squared minus 1. We would get plus a theta. And again, we said theta is going to be arc secant of x. And now we'll put on our plus c. And now we've got our solution. So again, you know, quite a few steps involved here, but hopefully it seemed, uh, I don't know. Hopefully it seemed relatively natural. So I guess my main point is, at, at a lot of steps, to me, it's there's really only a couple of reasonable things to do. You know, at the very beginning, we ruled out everything except integration by parts. And, um, you know, once we did integration by parts, we ended up with that new integral. Well, here this is where you have to just kind of, again, uh, be familiar with the different techniques. I say, well, oh, well, this should be something that I can do using a trig substitution. You've got to know the correct, you know, x equals secant theta or tangent theta or sine theta. This one involved secant theta, obviously. I think these trig substitutions can be pretty tricky because they turn into these trig integrals. And to me, the trig ones are probably the most complicated because sometimes you use identities, sometimes you do algebra. It's not always clear. Well, this is one, you know, again, if you don't recognize to use the identity, I don't know what you do. Um, so, again, when it comes to trig integrals, you certainly want to be uh, familiar with, with trig identities because a lot of times that does get used. Then it's simply a matter of, you know, expressing everything back in terms of x, and we are left with our solution.